reading out of the uh, NIV Bible this morning, and uh, I want to share just a few thoughts out of God's Word with you. St. John's Gospel, chapter 19, I'm uh, going to start reading at verse 38. I want to read this in your hearing this morning, and then we'll pray, and then you can be seated. St. John's Gospel, chapter 19, verse 38. It reads as thus, Later, Joseph of Arimathea asked Pilate for the body of Jesus. Now, Joseph was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly because he feared the Jews. With Pilate's permission, he took the body away. He was accompanied by Nicodemus, the man who earlier had visited Jesus at night. Nicodemus brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds. Taking the body of Jesus, uh, taking the body of Jesus, the two strips, wrapped it, the spices and strips of linen. This was in accordance with the Jews' burial customs at the place where Jesus was crucified. There was a garden, in the garden a new tomb in which no man had ever laid because it was the Jewish day of preparation. And since the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. And the word of the Lord is blessed. Verse uh, 41, at the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden, in the garden a new tomb in which never a man has laid. I want to share, preach from the subject this morning, what to do with a dead promise what to do with a dead promise. Before you take your seats, I know y'all trying to sit down on me. Let's pray. All right, I'm going to let you go. I'm going to let you sit down in one, one minute. Let's, let's pray. Bow your heads in Jesus' name. God of heaven, thank you for your goodness, your mercy, your great kindness. Thank you for this moment that we have to be in your presence. Thank you that this is the day that you've made and we will rejoice and we will be glad in it. God, I pray in Jesus' name that you would bless us to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. I pray, God, for somebody under the sound of my voice who may be depressed or oppressed or sad or in bondage. God, I wholly lean on your word this morning because I know you're able to do it. And you're not only able, you're able to do exceeding and abundantly above all we could ever ask or think. So I pray for the spirit of wisdom and the revelation in the knowledge of Jesus Christ that you might open before us a door of wisdom, that we might peer into your word and that we might be changed by the preaching and the teaching of your word. Thank you for this choir and these musicians and these hospitality workers, these members, these ushers. God, thank you for everybody. We need a word from you, God. So we trust you by your spirit to do it, to speak, to move, to have your way in this house. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we do pray. Everybody in agreement said amen. 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 You may be seated in God's presence. Hallelujah. I love God's word. I love God's word, and my desire is that the people of God would fall back in love with the word of God. David said, I desire your word more than my necessary food. And I am, I am, I am uh, amazed at how many people sometimes when they get into problems, they'll call a friend before they call on God. But I want to call us back into getting into God's word. I, I, I call us back to getting into God's word and to fall in love with the word of God. The Bible begins to give us over and over again encouragement and sustenance for our spirits and our souls. And let me tell you something. There is something in a refuge that, and a safe place you find in the word of God that you can find nowhere else. We find comfort and wholeness and peace in God's word. There is no other answer that you could ever get from anybody that would be greater than what the word of God says about you. In times of trouble, in times of chaos, when you need peace and you need joy, you can find it all in the word of God. I, I, I want you to understand that Paul says that God will supply all of our needs according to his riches in glory. And many times in our life, what we need most gets beyond us or out of our comprehension. But I want you to know that you serve a God who knows what you have need of before you even ask him. That God knows you so well. He knows what's going to be on your heart a week from now and what you're going to need a year from now. And so God says that I am the God who supplies all of your needs needs, everything. I, I want you to understand that you can't look to your job or look to your friends and look to your family for the needs you have because you were created by a God who knows everything about you. 
He told Jeremiah, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee and I ordained thee. He says that I have a predestined purpose for your life and I know what you need. And in order for you to really know what you need and why you are the way you are and why things have come in your life the way they have come, you have to go back to the manufacturer. You could take your car when it breaks down to a body shop and a, and a, and a mechanic in the alley and all those different kind of things, but when something really goes wrong, you should take it back to the manufacturer because the manufacturer is the one who put it together. And I want you to understand that salvation is going back to the manufacturer. To, 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 to go back to the manufacturer and ask God, why have you made me thus? Why have you fashioned me the way you have fashioned me? Why have you created me to be the way you've created me to be and the only one who knows the answer to those questions is God himself and so we come home boldly before the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find help in the time of trouble David says because in the time of trouble you shall hide me in the secret of his tabernacle he shall hide me he shall set me upon a rock and now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies round about me and I will sing yea I will sing praises unto my God hear O Lord when I cry with my voice and have mercy upon me. For when thou said, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Then he says, Wait on the Lord. And be of good courage. And he will strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. We have to go back to seeking God. He says, Seek me while I may be found. Call ye upon me while I am yet near. And I am concerned that we seek after riches and fame and fortune and all the things that this world has to offer and we have neglected to seek God. God calls all of us to discipleship. The, the, the call goes out to, for salvation and then there's another call to discipleship. Everybody does not answer the call to discipleship. And so sitting here today, we have Christians and we have some disciples. To be a disciple means that I have disciplined myself, that, that, that I don't walk contrary to the word of God and my feelings and my emotions are not dictated by the world of my situation or my circumstance. That I have disciplined myself, that I don't look to the, to the things which are seen for the things which are seen are temporal, but I close my eyes and I look to the things which are not seen but they are eternal I have to be able to close my eyes sometimes when my situation will cause me to be depressed and my situation calls me to be angry and be anxious about things I have to close my eyes and know with assurance that God is going to bring me out that God is going to fix this situation I may not know how I may not know when I don't know who God is going to use to bless me but I know some kind of way God is going to bring me out of this no I'm not gonna cuss and I'm not gonna fuss and I'm not gonna be depressed I'm not gonna lock myself in my room because I have disciplined myself I am a disciple and to be a disciple it means that I will bless the Lord at all times hallelujah when the situation is good and when the situation is bad I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise I don't let come out of my mouth the situation I don't rehearse my problems. I, in my mouth, there is always a praise. As Job says, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In good times, you have to learn how to bless him. In bad times, you have to learn how to bless him. When he is doing nothing, you have to learn how to bless him. That I am not going to let my praise be dictated by my circumstance. I am going to learn how to bless him in order to do that you must be a disciple you have to have that as a disciple that I will not let my emotions be moved by every which away and tossed to and fro that I am going to anchor myself in the Word of God God says that I make a promise to you and when I make a promise to you I'm going to swear by two immutable things the immutability of God means that God cannot change that he says I will swear by myself surely blessings I will bless thee and multiplying I will multiply thee I will make you this promise I am not going to swear by your goodness because sometimes we're not good he says I am going to swear by myself because I am always good because I am always faithful and he says that I am going to make you an heir of salvation I am going to promise myself and you become the beneficiary of what I have
Because I am not a man that I should lie. Neither the son of man that I repent. If it was not truth before I said it, when I spoke it, it became true. 